here outside Keyan Stadium in the shadows of Keyan Stadium with the fall foliage. I'm Ross Martin with Adam Smith from Inside Carolina. Uh, it's Bloody Monday here at it UNC is, Football. Uh, just announced you know, a couple hours ago, Noah Taylor out for the season, Desmond Evans out for the season, and running back Caleb Hood out for the season. Of course, uh, Noah Taylor and Desmond Evans, the kind of the two edge starters for UNC. Uh, we just talked to Mac Brown, Gene Chiswick, and Phil Longo for a good hour and 40 minutes. Um, let's go right to the injuries, Adam. Uh, big hit for UNC's defense with both Taylor and Evans out. Where do they turn? Uh, what's going on there, in your opinion? Yes, yeah, the two guys coming off the edge. It's three starters total, I was thinking about as you are saying that. And you, know, you have Des Evans and, and Noah Taylor. So Max said it uh, even before those uh, – that even before Des and, and Caleb Hood were pronounced out for the season, he said we're going to have to – Get creative with some moving parts here. Um, so yeah, so this is what they have. They're gonna they're gonna have uh, Javari Ritzy can play the yeah. power end. Sorry. So Cayman Rucker playing more Jack coming in playing more Jack likely starting if he is healthy. Uh, you have uh, Chris Collins. Chris Collins, of course. Chris Collins playing a lot. You have Javari Ritzy bouncing out to power in now. You could have Malachi Hamrick playing some more the true freshman Malachi Hamrick playing more uh, Jack and then potentially Bo Atkinson, the true freshman who has not logged yeah. a snap playing some power in. So you have to get creative, like you said. Yeah, I mean, it, our ears perked up when he said Bo Atkinson because, yeah, a highly recruited guy who's, who's not played. You felt like he was in line for a redshirt season. But, you know, Gene Chizik was talking about, you know, Malachi Hamrick, they've gotten some things out of him in that dime package on third downs. But, you know, what they'll be asking now are, will be some different things out of him because you can just put him in, down on third down and you can either say, all right, you're rushing the quarterback or you're dropping back uh, in pass coverage. And, you know, the learning curve will get steeper for him there. I think Chris Collins, yeah. you know, is maybe he's the starter now. I don't know. Kamen Rucker. Kamen Rucker left uh, the game against Pitt with an injury, and he played fantastic against Pitt. I mean, he was huge. Yeah, so, I mean, I think Kamen Rucker becomes maybe the, the most valuable player for UNC because he can play both end and Jack now. Yeah. He's coming off an injury as well, so we'll see there. I mean, I think they could have dealt with the loss of one, uh, but now losing two starters, I mean, that's, that's two elevenths of your defense. It is. Uh, now, but they do have depth on the defensive line, so we will be interested to see what happens against uh, Virginia. And Mac made the comment that, that, that's been echoing to us. That right when he was about to leave the, the podium today, the lectern, um, he was like, you know, if this had happened to us in previous years, we couldn't survive this. Mm -hmm. This is where your recruiting has to kick in. So we have to be able to call on these guys. And we've said it since August. We've said it since the spring that defensive line, that front seven, front eight, is uh, you know is in a deep area for UNC. Yeah, Jacoby Cowan is another yeah, player another one. Yeah. Who, who's played a, a decent amount, what, 15, 20 snaps a game, especially on UNC's He's been coming on. dime yeah. package, the Ohio State transfer. Okay, what's next? Caleb Hood out for the season. He has been UNC's starter pretty much as they've – Paired down the running back room, as you like to say. Um, so now, obviously, they lean heavily on Elijah Green, who's emerged a little bit, and, and Amarin Hampton, the true freshman, who's played, had good games, and then he's kind of disappeared, had good games, disappeared. Your thoughts on what happens now for the running back room? She's the, I mean, the elevator movement of the UNC running backs. I mean, it's almost been a weekly thing of green arrow up, red arrow down. I mean, um, DJ Jones is back now. He played just a few snaps uh, against Pitt. And, yeah, Caleb Hood has started the last three games, is it? Something like that. Miami, Duke, and Pitt. He's gone for the season. Um, Elijah Green, as of a couple of weeks ago, was just playing special teams and had a broken broken thumb. Mm -hmm. I would, uh, would you say he's the presumed starter now, Elijah, Elijah Green? Green? Yeah, probably. Either him or Omar, Omarion Hampton, I you guess. You would think Hampton and, and Green split snaps. Obviously, I mean, Hood has been solid. He's been a good running back. This is yeah. a loss. You know, I think it's a loss they can kind of deal with because of the depth in that right. room. Um, I think there's other rooms that, you know, an injury would be a, a drastic, more drastic of a hit. Linebacker would be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, what else? I mean, those kind of took the, the headlines right Oof. there, the injuries. But UNC is 7-1, 4-0 in the Coastal, heading to Virginia. Virginia team that is not uh, – not, not good. Yeah, no. not good yeah. on a first year head coach Tony Elliott. Yeah, your thoughts there? It's kind of a it's kind of a big contrast, isn't it? Because you can tell that people are feeling good around here. You can tell that Phil Longo is feeling good, Gene Chizik's feeling good, and Max feeling good about the overall state of the team, the overall state of affairs. But yeah, the injuries certainly put a cloud uh, on today uh, here here beneath the pines. But um, yeah, I mean Virginia Virginia is struggling. Uh, they still Virginia still has Brennan Armstrong quarterback. They still have Dontavian Wicks and 
Keaton Thompson at, at, at receiver. I mean, these guys, uh, Armstrong threw for 554 yards at UNC last year. Yeah. They're still there, but they're not scoring. They didn't score a touchdown last week in four overtimes against Miami. And how about this stat? Mac Brown's first win in Charlottesville. His next win in Charlottesville will be his first win in Charlottesville. Is that true? That's what someone saw me on Twitter. And I believe everything on Twitter. I, I know that he's, I believe, 4-9 and nine all time against yeah. UVA. So, beautiful scene up there uh, in the Shenandoah Valley. Um, I think another point is how much kind of Drake May was oh. discussed, not only by Mac Brown, but Phil Longo. You know, I think it's kind of reached a tipping point now where the national pundits are, are kind of seeing how good he is. Uh, 34 for 44 for 388 yards against Pitt, five touchdowns. He's tied for first in the nation in passing touchdowns, leads the nation in total offense and total touchdowns. Uh, fantastic season, just making all the throws, off platform, on the run, mobile. It's, 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 it's one of the best seasons ever for a UNC quarterback already as a, as a uh, retro freshman. It's remarkable. It's remarkable. Yeah, you're right. 388 yards last week, that's a season high. The previous week, 380 at Duke. Um, yeah, the numbers are there. The highlight plays are there. You ask, I, I thought it was a really good question, Ross. I'm not just blowing smoke here. When you ask him about a midseason Heisman, Heisman campaign, would that be something that Carolina would consider launching? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a worthwhile question. Yeah, and Mac just Mac said, said that it will. It kind of happens naturally. Right. When it you, is when, what it when is. When you're good, you, you get that Heisman hype. But yeah, he's you know, top five probably right now. Uh, for Heisman, so it's kind of crazy. They chanted, what did they, do? chanted Drake for Heisman uh, on the way out of the field uh, Saturday night against Pitt. But, yeah, I mean, people are starting to take notice for good reason. Um, and the more UNC keeps winning and the more that number, that national ranking by their name grows or decreases, you know, the higher they go in the poll, yeah. um, it's only going to, the attention is only going to, you know, get more and more focused. Yeah, UNC number 17, the AP, number 15, the coaches poll. I think defense is worth talking about. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Gene Chizik today uh you know i think the defense is is getting better getting better making opportune plays the turnover the forced fumble some key stops to force punts in the second half only allowing seven points to pit and shutting them out for the majority of the game and gene chizik saying like after eight games now the defense has kind of seen everything they need to see they know the calls they know where to go and it's a matter of uh just executing and, and getting better play by play gene said today it was the, they're gaining a clearer understanding of what they need to do and also the adjustments they need to make on the fly because we've seen that this carolina defense has been a pretty good second half defense i don't know if i'm setting them up for failure here but you know they've they've they have come through in the second halves of a lot of games as they did against pitt i mean it was a shutout for the final 20 25 minutes of the game there's four straight stops to end the game yeah. after picked the 24 14 lead and uh gene we were talking about it earlier you know, i thought gene made an interesting point that they only had they only gave up about 40 yards in missed tackles yeah. to pitt and the Extra yardage after missed tackles in some previous games has been astronomical. It seems like that's what they track. It's not just missed mm -hmm. tackles. It's yards for missed tackles, giving up over 100 against Duke, uh, right. which was of note there. So and I think Jeff Schottmer said this on Calling the Shots, presented by Blue Shark Vodka earlier today, that you know this defense doesn't have to be spectacular. It's, I mean, if they can hold a team to 24, 25 points, the offense is going to score 35, 40 it seems. So it just needs to be an okay average defense that makes some opportune stops to get the ball back to Drake May and, and he'll do the rest. Max said the other night, he's like, you know, the only thing you really need to worry about is scoring offense and scoring defense. Yeah. That's all you need to worry about. And in ACC play, UNC scoring off, scoring defense has been, has been respectable. Yeah, for sure. Big one up in Virginia, you know, a chance for UNC to get another coastal win, yeah. could strangle, they could seal the coastal if some other things happen. With Virginia, I'm not sure the exact things that have to happen there, but uh, and they can move to eight and one and five and zero oh in the ACC. A big one here. I think this was one of our uh, one of your best performances on the stand up here. You think so? Yeah. And you have another message for someone else, someone special out there? Yeah. If the viewers would allow me to, uh, my lovely daughter, her birthday is tomorrow. We're filming on Halloween, October 31st. She was born November 1st. She's turning 17. Happy birthday, babe. Uh, we love you. Uncle Ross loves you. And uh, appreciate you allowing me to do that. Yeah, we're hearing emergency vehicles. I'm not sure it's for all the injuries here <laughs> in, in Chapel Hill at Keenan uh, Football Center. But that's it for us for Inside Carolina. Adam Smith and I'm Ross Martin.